Right now on Sunrise, Derek Chauvin posting bond sparks a second evening of protests. I'll let you know how the conversation on policing and justice is expected to unfold today. Plus, Hurricane Delta on the move. We take you to its strike zone as it makes its way to the Gulf Coast this morning. I'm tracking Hurricane Delta. Category 3 winds up to 120 miles per hour expected to hit the southeastern portion of the country. The next presidential debate turning from a face off into a standoff. Why the president is calling it a waste of time and what Joe Biden has planned if the president doesn't show up. Then don't feel bad for hitting that snooze button. And there's no heroics in saying you sleep a little bit because that doesn't help you. Why getting enough sleep could prevent you from getting COVID-19. And this morning we're talking tacos, how two guys are using them to bring our community together during these tough times. It's Friday, October 9th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Employees at Target headquarters in downtown Minneapolis might want to invest in their home offices. The company just announced it'll be working them from home until the end or the middle of next year. So we know a lot of you have been working from home, but have any of you started heading back to work yet? Let us know using that hashtag Sunrisers. Yeah, we have a staggered uh, plan here, but who knows? I mean, with how COVID's going to go, it might change. Yeah. I might go back to you my basement. You might go back to your basement? No. With your <laughs> colleagues, those frogs and those. Yeah, the wildlife <laughs> kingdom yeah. down there. Oh, I feel like we've been doing a great job, like wearing our mask. Yeah. And so I'm hoping we can stay at work. Got mine yeah. right here. Yep. Got mine right here. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, today's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're already starting off the morning pretty mild with temperatures mainly in the uh, 60s, mainly in the mid 60s too, in and around the metro. Today, expect a high of 82, a little breezy with winds out of the south, which will help usher in warmer air. Already by one o'clock, we're at 77. And giving you a live look near the airport this morning. Maybe you have a flight to catch. Uh, this is 62 near Highway 77. Very quiet start, but you can see uh, MSP International glowing there uh, this morning. No crashes to report. We'll have another check of your Sunrise Drive coming up. Well, calm this morning after a second night of protest in the Twin Cities. It follows former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin posting a $1 million bond. He is charged with killing George Floyd in May and is now out of state prison awaiting trial. Kai Edwards joins us now with what happened last night and what's next, Kaya? Gia, protests ended relatively early by around 9 o'clock last night, and they appeared peaceful. Let's show you what we saw in Minneapolis. First off, people met outside of Hennepin County Government Center, and then they marched around downtown. Meanwhile, another crowd met in St. Paul. Now, this event was actually already planned before Derek Chauvin posted bond. That development, though, added emphasis to their message on police reform and on the justice system. In fact, organizers renamed their event Lock Up Derek Chauvin. You can expect these kinds of conversations to continue today. There's a public forum on the killing of George Floyd and the unrest afterward. Uh, there's also a summit happening today. It's a downtown development and Lake Street Summit. They're going to be discussing how rebuilding is going in the city of Minneapolis. And this is actually an annual summit with obviously a specific focus this year. Gia? All right, Kaya, thanks for that. Well, also happening today, it's the return of Friday Night Lights in Minnesota. So here's a live look from Chaska High School where the prep football team will hold their first game tonight and take a look. They put care 11 up there. Thanks. Well, the season was pushed back and shortened because of the pandemic. Games are limited to 250 spectators. More on that coming up at 630. And some good news for indoor high school events. The state high school league is now allowing each student to have two spectators at indoor events like volleyball matches or musicals. However, there has been uh, it has to be a limit of 250 people or less. More than half of counties in Minnesota are seeing a rise in cases, so uh, that means districts may have to start switching learning models. Here are the latest numbers. MDH reported almost 1,300 new COVID-19 cases yesterday. Only three times have we seen it over 1,200 cases, and that two-week average above 1,000 cases a day right now. We have to talk about the crisis in Wisconsin. Also yesterday, the state hit another record, more than 3,100 positive cases, the largest single day total since the pandemic began. The last record was sitting above 2,800 on October 3rd. The two week average there shows the virus still very contagious, about 2,400 cases per day. 
And we're following breaking news this morning. Delta taking aim on the Gulf Coast. Here's a live look at the radar from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The storm currently a category three packing winds of about 120 miles per hour. Now thousands in the south heating warnings and getting out. Take a look at the scene yesterday as thousands evacuated the already storm battered coast. And Guy, I want to know when is this thing really going to make landfall? You know, Friday afternoon, later this afternoon uh, into this evening is when we're expecting a direct hit landfall. We're already seeing outer bands producing heavy rain into the southeastern corner of Texas and obviously uh, expecting to do a direct hit into southwestern Louisiana. Uh, winds at about 120 miles per hour. We could see storm surge up to uh, ranging anywhere between 7 uh, to 11 feet. And then you'll see the storm hook off and track off to the east uh, by later in the weekend Sunday already hitting uh, the Mississippi River Valley. All right, guy, and taking you live now from the White House, where President Trump is speaking out about the next debate. Alicia, you have more on this. Yeah, Gia, the next presidential debate is scheduled for next Thursday, but last minute changes have the president wanting to back out. The story, as you can see here, has a lot of you guys talking on our Care Love and Facebook page, 800 comments and counting. So more on the debate dilemma in our digital dive. So let's get you caught up to speed. Yesterday morning, the Commission on Presidential Debates made this announcement. The next debate will be a virtual virtual one, saying they are doing that to protect the health and well-being of everyone involved. This change change up comes after President Trump was, of course, diagnosed with COVID. In his first televised interview after testing positive for the virus with Fox Business, Trump not only downplayed his condition, but said he'd rather hold a campaign rally next week than debate Joe Biden. No, I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. That's not what debating is all about. You sit behind a computer and do a debate. It's ridiculous. And then they cut you off whenever they want. Now the two campaigns are debating over the debate schedule. Trump's team is proposing a one week pause, pushing their final matchup to the end of this month, just a few days before the actual election. Meanwhile, Biden's campaign is rejecting that, instead calling for the town hall to move to the 22nd, saying, quote, the president's erratic behavior does not allow him to rewrite the calendar. We set the dates. I'm sticking with the dates. I'm showing up. I'll be there. And in fact, if he shows up fine, if he doesn't, fine. Might be Biden just on a debate stage by himself. Uh, a lot of people on our Facebook page will think that we've all been doing this whole virtual thing for many months now. So why can't the presidential debate be virtual, be the same? Others, though, siding with President Trump, saying it's ridiculous to change the rules so last minute. So, uh, yeah, the idea Biden and Trump would be in their own mm -hmm. space. The moderator would be on stage and it's town hall style. So folks right. would be present, but we still have no idea if that's going to happen at all. Exactly. I know a lot of people were excited about this virtual debate, given, you know, the way that the first one went. But um, yeah, we'll see if it happens. We'll be following this one, Alicia. Yeah. Thanks. Now time for your morning rush. Today, the University of Minnesota Board of Regents will decide the fate of several sports. Men's sports programs, track and field, tennis and gymnastics are all on the chopping block. It's because of budget shortfalls thanks to the pandemic. The U says it's losing $75 million of their athletic budget this year. The chance of a lifetime for former Gopher running back Rodney Smith. He signed on with the Carolina Panthers. Originally, Smith wasn't drafted, but injuries in Carolina's running game left an open opportunity. Debate Night last night in Minnesota's 2nd Congressional District. No audience thanks to the pandemic, which was a hot topic for the virtual face-off. Well, I think by uh, any measure, the administration's response to COVID-19 in this public health crisis has been an absolute failure of leadership. But the lack of federal strategy when it comes to rapid testing, to contact tracing, to isolation early on in this pandemic has led to where we are today. One other candidate in the second district, Adam Weeks, died suddenly last month. Minnesota law pushed the race to February. Congresswoman Craig is now suing the Secretary of State's office over the delay. Kistner says the lawsuit only adds to voter confusion. Employees at Target's downtown Minneapolis headquarters won't be heading back to the office until June of next year because of the pandemic. Target says it plans to incorporate remote work into its long-term vision. And that's your Friday morning rush. Guy, what's our one thing weather? Yes, yeah, sunrise this morning at about 721 and expect some middle level clouds with temperatures in the 60s this morning at the bus stop, even close to 70.
And the one thing traffic, no major big closures this weekend, so we can all cheer on this Friday morning. A live look too if you're waking up uh, just north of Apple Valley this morning on Highway 77 at uh, 127 streets. Looking good there too. Well, could your sleep schedule make you more susceptible to COVID-19? The science behind this claim that has a lot of people hitting the snooze button. And are you sick of getting bombarded by political text? How you can keep those messages from filling up your inbox. And tacos bringing the Twin Cities together. In 15 minutes, we give you a taste of a new online show in the Twin Cities, Tacos and Tastemakers.